Gentlemen, uh, congratulations on uh, this is the second season of both your shows. Uh, and they're so beautiful. I, I think I, I'm going to start with Alex. Um, the technology required to shoot at night has improved so much. Correct. Yes. Hi, Tony. Um, I think uh, I think filming new stories in natural history is our currency. And we're always looking for tales we haven't told before, animals we haven't shown before. Um, and the night for me felt like a really, a really rich picking ground. Like it, it, there's so many great stories that um, have never been filmed because uh, sane people tend to film in the daytime when it's easy. Um, and uh, for, throughout the decades, we've had different um, technologies that have, have, have improved with uh, night filming. Um, and um, uh, I feel like I felt that the technology just got to a point where we could tell night stories for the first time in a way that it didn't feel like a night series. We felt like we could follow characters and we weren't, I didn't constantly have to feel like I'm, I'm in the dark, I'm at night. And, and I think that was, that was the advent of, of night color photography. Um, so until now, whenever we filmed animals at night, it had that kind of IR look or it had a sort of black and white feel. And it felt quite like a science kind of, it felt quite scientific or, or military almost. Yeah. Um, and, and it's hard to emote with an animal when um, it looks like a kind of a, a thermal tar target. And so what we wanted to do was to try and film it in, in a way that felt different. Um, and the cameras were, were definitely operating right at the very limit of their capability um right at the limit uh so we took the night cameras and we combined them with astronomy lenses which were designed for filming and photographing very different uh, distant nebula very um uh tiny dark and distant kind of um astronomy features mm -hmm. and together they gave us just just about enough um uh, uh exposure so we could film for a few nights around full moon um so it was it was very challenging in terms of of um we were sending multiple teams off to different locations for these few precious nights where we could get an exposure. And about four or five nights after full moon, all the cameras were completely redundant and we'd have to pack up and, and come home. Wow. Uh, again, such technology is just, it's amazing to see that working. Tom Hugh Jones, tiny world. It, it, everything that's going on is going on under our feet. Yes, exactly. That's that's really what we wanted to bring to life to show people the things that they often overlook and that seem small and significant down there is to use technology and storytelling to immerse themselves in this uh, amazing macro world and show these larger than life characters and and I and I suppose really put, cast them like superheroes in a way the the things that small creatures have to do to survive the challenges they face every day are, are so enormous you know if we had to go through them <laughs> we wouldn't make it past a single day and when when you think you know a bug maybe has a, a hundred babies at the least uh, you know only one of them is going to survive to have kids so you know it really is an action an adventure of a, of a lifetime because um there's just so many different forces and predators and things they have to dodge to succeed that it's uh, extraordinary uh, when i watch the program i feel like gulliver <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's something we try to achieve. That slight Tom and Jerry look, and it, um, we were always looking for ways, maybe, to put people in the background or larger animals, just to give people that kind of strange, twisted sense of scale. Alex, as as a as a nature photographer, nature cinematographer, and director, what do you learn from every episode? Is are there new things that you're learning? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think uh, one of the great things about filming at night, uh, although it's challenging, is so much of the behavior we managed to capture was was new to science. Um, for example, um, peregrine falcons, uh, the fastest predator on earth, uh, daytime hunters, uh, and we uh, filmed and, and documented them capture, um, hunting after dark in Chicago using city, city lights. Um, all sorts of weird goings on on the African savannah, cheetahs hunting after dark, which um, uh, had never been filmed successfully hunting by moonlight. Uh, on the new series, series two, we have hyenas hunting elephants, um, which was um, blew us away. We had no idea that that, that happened. Um, the biggest mob of, of kangaroos, uh, a mob of mega mob of 300 kangaroos gathering around full moon um, to protect themselves from dingoes, all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, uh, one of my favorite stories is that um, young joey kangaroos or not older than joeys but young juvenile kangaroos when they're learning to box uh they tend to do it after dark so that they their peers can't <laughs> see how rubbish they are so they have to kind of learn the skills after dark before breaking out their moves in the daylight so there's 
a whole sort of same planet, different world. It's a whole kind of tranche of new stories, which um, which was which was great to have the opportunity to to shine a light on. Thank you both for your time and and in doing this, Tom. Damn you for giving uh, uh, spiders uh, a personality. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Even spiders need love. <laughs> I, well, I don't think so. I, I do. <laughs> But thank you guys both. Uh, I appreciate it, and uh, and take care. A pleasure. Thanks, nice to speak to you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.